turnips and tornadoes. I'm Joanne. I'm Dan and we're not in the garden today. We're not in the kitchen. We're in the dining room and there's a reason for that. Because I like to eat more than cook. <laughs> <laughs> That's <Maybe>. my line. <laughs> uh, yeah, we thought we would answer some questions and maybe give some more tips. People have been asking us and we are trying really hard to get caught up on the comments. Best way to leave a comment is in the post underneath that. Joanne goes in there and looks at some of those, and we're going to try to do a better job of looking at all of them. Yes. All right. So, do you mean to be the uh, yes the questioner here? Yes. All right. So a little bit different today. Hopefully, uh, you'll learn something and things like that. But we do want to get to that. Uh, Judith asks, in the fall, could you please demonstrate roasting turnips? I love your videos. Turnips. We don't grow turnips, but no. I think the technique, would that be the same? And I, and I think we've even mentioned it's not our favorite vegetable. We truly, even though it's in our name. We truly love almost all vegetables, turnips. But I tell you what, Judith, this is going to make me get turnips again, buy some, and try them again. Right. And we'll roast them. I think that when I, the one time I bought them, I bought them at a roadside stand, and they were huge. So possibly they were over too, or just too big. mature. Okay. So we're going to try them again, and, and we will do a video on that. And if we still don't like them, we'll say we still don't <laughs> like them. We don't like tornadoes either, for the record. No. You know, but uh, why, why do we have tornadoes in the? It's name? because it has to do with meteorology, and that's what I track, and that keeps me at work a lot in the springtime. So anyway, uh, Kathy wants uh, okra and coleslaw recipes. Okay, we'll have to wait till we've used all the okra that's in our freezer from last summer. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to wait until, and it's usually mid to a little later in the summer by the time our okra makes, but we'll make some then because goodness knows we'll be cooking okra then. Well, coleslaw, you make that. A coleslaw anytime. We yes. had it on one of them, I think on the jackfruit, but you didn't show how to make it. Okay. I will do that, and I actually make about three different kinds of coleslaw, so maybe to round out that one, maybe we can make three different kinds of coleslaw. Cool. I like that. Okay. Now, we had a comment about pork butt. Yes. And we made a little joke, or I did, and we both kind of wondered why they called it that, and somebody right. knew, so Terry Fletcher wrote, mm -hmm. in Colonial New England, butchers packed inexpensive cuts of meat into large barrels that were called butts. For storage and for transportation, the shoulder meats packed into these barrels became known as pork butt, and the name stuck. So there you have now it. Now we know, because it, it made no sense. It made no sense to, to me. me. Fun yeah. to say. Two different but. ends of the animal. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Gary, uh, he likes using a griddle and a smoker. Chopped veggies are best. Uh, it says when it warms up, can you expand your cooking outdoors? Uh, knife sharpening episode will also be wonderful. Well, we don't have an outside cook. We did when we were uh, omnivores and we ate out. I wouldn't mind getting a grill. Yes. Smoke some veggies out there, maybe roasted corn. We've thought about it a lot, veggie burgers. Oh, yeah. We've thought about it a lot. We gave away our grill when we became plant-based. We didn't think we'd use it. Oh. Now I'm thinking maybe a small grill would be nice. So we'll ha we'll maybe we'll look into doing that. Absolutely. How about nice sharpening? Now you've got a sharpener yeah, you've I'm, had for like 20 years, yeah. but you claim that you're not good at it. Well, I'm. I am. You know, our son used to cook professionally, and he does the what do you call that? A steel and yeah. yeah. Very well, masterfully. If he ever comes and visits, yes, maybe, we'll maybe have we can do that together. I can show me using my machine, <laughs> <That's right. laughs> and he'll show it. And him. he'll do how you're really supposed to do it. So yeah. I Growing guess. up at the barber shop that I went to, and I know some barbers still do this today. They had the leather strap that was on the chair. Interesting. And then, oh my. And then before they would shave, of course, I wasn't shaving then, <laughs> but they would do the back of your neck right there with that. You were sure not to cough or anything like that. <laughs> well, I haven't had a good razor shave in like forever. Uh, right. So, right. but uh, that's good. You see it I in the movies know. with the with the foam on you and things like right. that. Right. Yeah. That's interesting how leather would sharpen. I don't know. Maybe it was the technique. Maybe it, it was a be. different steel. I don't know. Interesting. But yeah, now they have that little rod. Interesting. Uh, uh, Did your um. Did the guy that used to cut your hair use a leather strap? He used to cut your ear about every other time. <laughs> he would actually 
<laughs> I love that old man. Uh, <laughs> but I kept going back to But he actually did that with his scissors. Oh, my goodness. So that's, they were Sometimes. sharp. Maybe it was an electric razor or something. And uh, he would nick, and I would often have cuts. Sometimes, there were a few times he cut both ears, yeah. and you would come in bleeding. I'd say, why don't you get another another barber? I forgot about that guy. I loved him. I doubt he's, uh, he's giving bad haircuts in heaven somewhere. Uh, okay. Uh, Medge suggests, I want a close-up of your finished product you make, and and uh, you're not the only one to suggest that. Mm -hmm. I've been negligent in doing that. we got to do it. Yes, it's, it's our learning our camera techniques. <clears throat> we, we don't have it down yet. No, we we're, don't. We're, we're working on it. Going autofocus, and this, sometimes it jumps back and forth. These are all excuses. It's our job to figure it out. I'll grab my other camera and shoot a, a final shot. Plus, we have to do the uh, thumbnail anyway. Right. That we put the beginning of the episode. Right, right. So, yeah, I can understand so, people wanting that. Yeah, thank you, Madge. Yeah. Uh, Dan, the camera was too low. It cut off part of your hair <laughs> Again, on the top of it. Again, camera Whoops. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, in television, just so you'll know, they have an external monitor. They hook it up. And so you can see over to the side exactly what the shot looks like for the oh, talent, okay. which is what people in front of the camera are called, and behind. In here, we have to kind of frame it up. And so sometimes there in the island... Um, I will scrunch down a little bit. Or I'll do, we'll do a semi-spread eagle, and so I'm lower because... But we're getting another tripod. That'll help. Yeah. Are you calling me short? <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> You're perfect. Uh, so anyway, so thank you. Yes, we do notice those. When I edit them, I'm like, oh, why didn't you look at that? So anyway, we're learning this. I've spent a career in front of the camera and not behind it, and I've gained an right. appreciation for all those uh, right. behind it. We're learning. Yep. Yeah, Can you follow up with the video showing how you transplant the plants from the winter sowing jugs you make to the garden? I think we did that in some spring ones. We separated them, and we put those in the ground. I thought we did. But another shot at that uh, for the warm season crops. Right, and that will be around mid-April. Yeah. So that that video will probably come out yeah. a little later. They yeah. want to see how we separated them. And, right, because they're so kinda, close together. Yeah, you, I think you, didn't you just kind of stab in there and I separate them, or did you we'll pull them We'll show it. Um, you can, there are different methods you can use, and this one website that I follow that, that got me interested in winter sowing, they said just plant the HOS. And they kept saying that, just plant the HOS. And I thought, what is HOS? <laughs> they call it hunk of seeds. <laughs> and they literally just They plant the whole thing? Well, not the whole thing. Okay. They'll take like a chunk of, I don't know, one and a half by one and a half or whatever, plop the whole thing into the hole, and then go over where they want the next plant. And their theory, <laughs> and it must work because they know what they're doing, but I don't think I'm going to follow that theory. <laughs> is that the strong will survive and the weak will not. <laughs> so I'm just more OCD that I'm not able to do that. But I love that, HOS. That's uh, <laughs> the whole new acronym. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Um, Mark and Amy, <clears throat> on building a garden, I think that's what they were asking, building a garden, uh, full sun, partial sun, morning, afternoon, east, west. Let's say we were starting over. We moved somewhere and we started over, built a raised bed, what side of the house do you believe is ideal? West or south, because I don't know any vegetables that, there are maybe some, but I don't know any vegetables that don't require full sun. Okay. Um, one caveat to that is that we live in where the summers are brutal, pretty brutal. Mm -hmm. And so if you had a little bit of afternoon shade the very last part of the day, that could actually be beneficial. We've never had that. So. Okay. Um, but that would be ideal, but most people don't have ideal. Afternoon shade to temper the heat during yes. the hottest part. And, of and I don't mean at noon. You need more full sun than that. Okay. Full sun, I think, is, is called six to eight hours. I think six hours is a little on the skimpy side. Right. So, um, But if you had that little last little bit of shade, you know, Good. last few hours of sunlight, it, it would be kind of nice. Okay, somebody's asking about sprouts, not the grocery store, but the uh, food product. Uh, do you do them? If so, which ones? How much? How you use them in recipes or just in salads? 
Uh, I've seen where there are soil-based sprouts and jar moisture growing techniques. What do you know about them that uh, you can share yeah, with everyone? I've, I've seen the soil too where they just plant a very shallow tray. It's huge. And um, so that's actually live plants. Uh, I don't, let me show you. I have two, I should have brought my other one. I use two different things. One is it's an attachment to a mason jar and, and both of mine are, are just water based. Okay. And then this tower one, um, yeah, you haven't used this in a while. I know. I'm glad she asked that question because I freeze my seeds. And because I freeze them, I forget that I need to go ahead and... Um, so it's all these and you'll plant, plant yeah, all you these little suckers? Yeah, you put seeds on these. And you don't have to use all four. Just however many trays because it makes a lot of seeds. Okay. Um, okay. So you just put your seeds in. You soak them first, as I recall. It's been a while. It's really been six months or more since I've done them. And then you put water in the top one, and this bottom one holds the water, and you let the water filter through every one of them, and you, you change that water out every, I believe it's twice a day. I should have looked at my oh, directions wow. for it. <laughs> and, uh, and then you go ahead and you empty that bottom one. You don't want that water sitting in it. And um, let's see. And you can put, this says don't put the lid on when sprouting. Do not use lid when sprouting. I thought I did, but okay. either way works. It's good to read the instructions now, <laughs> yes. years later. But I I, that, that, that's a lot of stuff. And so yeah. green salads, what else did you Yeah, I have a salad mix that has, let's see, I wrote it down because oh. I had to go to the, to the, to my freezer and get them to, it has alfalfa, radish, and broccoli mixed seeds. And that's what I use in salad. It makes a very fine sprout. Then for bigger sprouts, I use mung beans, and that's something I would throw into like a stir fry. The little fragile ones wouldn't be good in a stir fry. It w they would just burn up, wouldn't they? Well, they'd shrivel up, and you'd just wonder what what that is in there. Okay. But the mung beans make a a big kind of fat sprout, and uh, so anyway, that's that's what I do, and I do love them, I, and especially in the winter when you can't get lots of things. Yeah. Well, why don't we? We'll grow this and yeah, let people kind of check that. that out. Let's do so that. So, what do you have over there? People ask about uh, any tips and suggestions you have for storing vegetables, and and after you come from the grocery store. Uh, it's kind of a hectic time. She's trying to get the refrigerator stuff back in the freeze, uh, refrigerator. But you have a few things that you do to make vegetables last longer. So show us and talk a little bit about that. I prefer to go to the grocery store about every 10 to 14 days. I don't always able to do that, but I try to because it's not a long drive, but we don't have one down the street. We oh. live in a very small town. So one thing I do, and I know this uses up paper towels and people try not to use paper towels, but it's worth it to me to keep the, I can keep like red peppers for at least a couple weeks, is I just kind of separate them in the plastic with a few, with some paper towels. That seems to really help a lot. It, it, it just absorbs that tiny bit of moisture that they put off. Yeah, you do the same thing with, uh, with my lettuce. lettuce. So yes. you'll take a, that's a two gallon yes. probably bag and just shove some paper towels in there. Soaks off the moisture and keeps from getting wimpy and wilty, is yes. that right? And on the lettuce, what I do is I go ahead and separate all the leaves. We hardly ever use iceberg, it's usually loose leaf lettuces. I separate all the leaves, wash them, spin them very dry, and then I put them in a plastic Ziploc bag with some towels, and I can use them for two weeks, a good wow. two weeks. And also that way when you think, oh, a salad would be nice with this, I can have a salad in 10 minutes. I don't have to wash the lettuce every time and the, all that stuff. You get ready to do a salad and all of a sudden the lettuce yes. is garbage. Yes, or you're making a sandwich. What is the, this? Okay, oh, this okay. is a weird one and I've done this for years. I read about it for mm -hmm. years first to wrap your celery in foil. Okay. And I thought, that just doesn't make sense. What in the world would foil have to do with keeping celery? And I read it so many times, I thought, okay, I'm going to try it. My celery will last four or five weeks easy, just as crisp as, as when I get it. And then I finally read the explanation is that, um, and I made a, I did a really poor job this time of the foil. Sure. I read the explanation was that celery does need to be covered 
but it also needs a, just a tiny bit of air also. And foil doesn't do that good of a job of completely mm -hmm. sealing it. And so it gives you that right ratio okay. of keeping it sealed, but also letting it get a little bit of air. And it works. You could reuse this foil also. Oh, yeah. I don't. I, I use it the whole time. I just did a really bad job this time. I made it too short. Right. And then it had it's like how I wrap Christmas presents. There you go. Here. Poor it job. Does, it does help. It does we help. are thrifty. So yes. you can reuse foil. Yes. We will as well. And then what are these? I see these yeah. in the refrigerator. Yes. And as I'm getting my sugar-free root beer, and <laughs> I wonder what this is all about. This is, this is a cilantro and Italian parsley. And the best way I've known to keep it, because it can wilt really quickly, uh, is I cut, when I bring it home from the grocery store, I cut off the ends because those ends have sealed themselves up and that way it opens them up to absorbing water. We've had these for like four days. And uh, then I put, I don't always do this, but it's best to give it a little bit of a little shield too. Then I cover it with a plastic bag, give it a little room at top and put a rubber band around it and it can keep in the refrigerator for, oh, probably a week at least because wow. I think they go bad really fast and possibly even longer if it's pretty fresh when you get it. I would not do this with all herbs. For instance, basil, it hates the cold, so you can't really put it in the, in the refrigerator. It will start turning brown on you. Very good. So in another episode, we're going to do falafels. Yes. And uh, I was asking about um, what you use for these. There's a lot of pita bread type things. you have suggestions mm -hmm. on well, pita bread? Well, I bought some, and someday I'm going to learn to make pita bread. I just haven't delved Great. into that. But um, <clears throat> you want one that's a little puffy because the whole th deal is you're going to cut it in half and then separate. That's what pita bread is. It bakes in such a way that it puffs up, and then as it cools off, it drops back down. So you want a real puffy pita, pita bread. I, the brand I buy, they discontinued it in the grocery store I go to the most. So I tried a couple other brands. I could not get them separated. So they mm. were useless for, you know, falafel pitas. So just look for a real puffy one and that helps. And one day I will learn to make them. Absolutely. Okay, somebody asked about other things that we plan to make in the future. There's a lot of different things. But, you know, we can go through this cookbook, but we'd rather this be your channel and you kind of guide us through what you want. I saw this thing on top and I got excited yeah. because, I, that in a while. because <laughs> I haven't had it in a while. I know. And a lot of people might be interested in that. And what is that? It's a plant-based meatloaf without meatloaf, meat. With quotes in it. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I love that. So hopefully it is we'll do it. Works out well for us too because I make it in a loaf pan like a bread pan and I cut slices of it. We have a slice and then I individually uh, put put the rest of the slices in the frid in the freezer and mm -hmm. so we can have it. Sometimes I'll make two loaves full and that'll last us two or three months. All right. Well listen, uh, thank you so much for subscribing and liking and again your questions. Some people will send them to my Facebook, some people will send it. We do have a, a website that we're still working on. It's me, but it's <laughs> not very good right now. But uh, we have turnips and ten, uh, tornadoes dot com. We'll be starting to add some of the links there. We have a Twitter account, which we don't check yet. Mm -hmm. We need to start that. But again, this is your channel. You have a question, suggestion, a correction. Um, we'd love to hear it Absolutely. as well. So uh, again, falafels coming up, some other stuff uh, that we'll make. Uh, it's on our dry erase board in there, but uh, we've got a lot more planned. But if you guys want something, uh, let's uh, hear it from you. And thanks for sharing. When you share this, uh, to your side or uh, Aunt Betty that lives in Vermont, if uh, you share that with her, that helps the channel grow virally as well. So that's, that's yes. great. And if you're not plant-based or who you're thinking about sharing it with plant-based, some of our recipes will not be plant-based and some can be changed to, um, to include meat. Yeah. So. I mean, when you made the, uh, the quinoa thing, just put a big yeah. slab of meat on there and then put that as yeah, a side. I did not want to make just a plant-based um, 
videos. No. So you won't be making any steak. Is that what you're saying? Well, you know, I never was good at making steak. It's probably good on a plant based person. That's I why we turned plant based good. because you weren't good at it. My, Maybe. my steaks were bad. <laughs> you know, what are we going to do about this? Let's just go. Plant -based. All right, guys, thank you for watching. A little bit different episode today, but we did want to answer some of your questions, kind of get caught up on that. We hope you have a fantastic day, and we are so grateful for you watching. Yes. All right. You guys take care. Take care. Bye-bye.